Okay, we're done with viruses. Now we're looking at prions. Prions are different. They are little proteins that cause horrible diseases. Um, when we look at this course, in Unit 4 we're going to cover a lot of infectious diseases. The only ones we won't cover are the ones caused by fungi, protists, and prions. So we have to kind of talk about prions and prion diseases now, and there aren't very many of them, um, and I won't give you a lot of detail about many of them. So this won't be so bad, but um, you will also never forget prions once you know about them. Um, I'll just give you an example of that. Um, when I was in graduate school, I knew a lot of graduate students. And um, in our second year, one person I knew had joined a lab, and I didn't know what lab he had joined. I didn't know what research he was doing. So we're all sitting in a conference room waiting for a seminar to start, just chatting. And we said, oh, what are you working on? What, what research are you doing now? And he said, oh, I'm working on prions. I'm studying how they, how they uh, survive in the environment. And we all started laughing, and then we scooted away from him. And then unconsciously, we all at the same time just kind of decided to stay away from him. And I don't think I ever talked to him again. And the only reason for that was because I'm that scared of prions. And it's silly, but I wasn't the only one who had that response. So here we go. Um, prions. They are little proteins that cause transmissible spongiform encephalopathies. So uh, let's break this down. Encephalopathy means something bad happening in the brain, I, th I think. Encephalopathy. Yeah, it's, that makes sense, right? Um, spongiform, it turns the brain into a sponge. Transmissible, it can spread from person to person. So that's not what you want. So here are here's a list of the ones we will look at. Scrapie is the original one that people knew about in sheep, and what happens with this is the sheep, um, as their brains start to fall apart, they start scraping against trees and stuff because they itch, and they do that until their skin disintegrates. Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease and the variant Creutzfeldt-Jakob happen in humans when people in middle age, people will just randomly get these, and um, their brain will deteriorate until they die. Kuru happened um, when a group of people, I mean, they weren't really cannibals, but they would ritualistically eat the brain of a deceased person as part of the funeral, and that's how you get um, a prion disease, and they would get Kuru from that, and their brains would slowly d deteriorate. Uh, mad cow disease is a prion disease, if you've heard of that. Um, cows behave strangely. It's bovine spongiform encephalopathy. Chronic wasting disease is a disease that we're having an outbreak of right now in the U.S., and it inf affects deer and elk and their relatives. And then um, fatal familial insomnia is kind of what it sounds like. Some some families are predisposed to have prion diseases attack the thalamus, and one of the things that happens is some of these people actually, once it gets bad enough, they will never fall asleep again. Um, that's terrible. One of the things that's scary about these things is that w from when you're exposed to when you start getting symptoms, the shortest I've ever heard of is six months. Ten years is more typical, in some cases 40 years. So these are the things where if you know you've been exposed, you're going to wonder for the next decade if your brain is going to deteriorate um, and until you die. So here's what typically happens. Um, a person or an animal would slowly just lose their connection to the outside world. Their cerebellum would not be helping them coordinate. They wouldn't eat as well. Um, and eventually they die. And the only way to diagnose this is to do an autopsy. And if you see their brain has spongy regions of abnormal tissues, then you know this is what they had. Um, so
So what causes these things? What is a prion? Well, throughout a lot of history, we thought they were caused by viruses, and that's because viruses were hard to find, and we didn't know that prions existed. So these days we can find viruses pretty easily because we have a lot of technologies for detecting viral nucleic acids, but in the 80s and 90s we didn't really have that as much. And um, so we just kind of assumed that any disease we couldn't explain was caused by a virus we hadn't yet discovered. Um, so around that time this famous person and his colleagues, um, they found those weird proteins in, um, in sheep brains, and they found that they could inject them into other animals and cause that disease, and that is a form of Koch's postulates, and they got the Nobel Prize for that. Um, so it's one, one protein that really causes um, prion diseases. So prions are misfolded proteins that can um, cause properly folded versions of that same protein to also misfold. So it turns out that in, ma in mammalian neural tissue we have a protein called PRPC. We don't know what it does. It's named after the fact that it's involved in prions. It's prion protein, the cellular version that's the normal version we have in our neurons. And through the worst possible luck, it turns out that in very rare situations it will misfold. And in this version, it can catalyze other copies of it to misfold and look like this. And so this is called PRP, prion protein scrapey. So if you have one of these in one of your neurons, it will slowly convert all the others to this form, and they'll, they'll lose whatever function they were doing, but they'll also eventually kill the neuron. And no one could have ever designed this. If you think about it, somebody who's going to get Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease in their 40s has lived for four decades without this happening. And then at some point, one of these proteins flips and becomes the other version. And if you think about it, the vast majority of people never get these diseases. So the chance of this ever happening, of this protein ever spontaneously becoming like this, is astronomically small. But when it does happen, it catalyzes that same reaction to keep happening and happening until the whole brain stops working. Um, so, yeah, that's terrible luck. We could never have imagined that. So, yeah, we don't know what PRPC does. We don't know what it's, an, the healthy version does. Um, but if it turns to PRPSC, it presumably stops doing what it was doing before, but also it then kills the neuron. And so as the dead neurons accumulate, we both lose their function, but also the brain gets this spongy form appearance. It gets worse because PRPSC um, is resistant to heat and radiation, which means that um, if a deer, for example, dies from chronic wasting disease and it falls over and it's, it rots slowly, um, all of its neurons can potentially have this in them, and those proteins will survive in the environment. They're, as, they're, they're more resistant than endospores. So um, that's part of why we think there's an outbreak of um, chronic wasting disease going on right now is because these proteins don't go anywhere. Um, so yeah, most, most people I know who work with, I'm not kidding, I knew, I knew somebody who worked in a BSL-3 lab on tuberculosis she had to wear a space suit to do her research, and she would not go near that guy who worked with prions. We're, we're not good people. We're bad people. Um, but we're very much afraid of things like this. Um, right, so some of these diseases are spontaneous, and some of them aren't. Some of them are transmissible. So for something like Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, we don't know how it happens. We don't know how the initial... 
um, initial flip happens. But for a lot of diseases, we know that you get it from something else that already had it. So Kuru is the first example. And the Foray people in Papua New Guinea um, had a, a ritual at funerals of consuming the brain of the dead person. And it was a respectful way to keep them in the community after they died and like something like that. Um, but now that we know about prions, we know you you cannot go near someone else's brain um, because that's the most direct way to get a prion disease going. Um, Kreutzfeldt Jakob is, is again the spontaneous disease. Um, when I said a 40 year old gets it, I should have said a 70 year old gets it because you literally can go six decades or more without this happening and then boom, it happens. But also, <laughs> I don't know how this happened in a surgery, but someone who was doing a surgery on a person who had Kreutzfeldt-Jakob contaminated a scalpel because they cut through a neuron and then managed to cut themselves with the same scalpel and they got Kreutzfeldt-Jakob disease. And so they start losing control of their muscles and then they get progressive dementia and then they die. Now this is rare, um, 500 cases per year in the US, but it's also spectacularly bad. Uh, chronic wasting disease is what's happening in the deer and the elk, and it's similar. The deer act strangely. One thing they do is they don't hide when hunters are hunting. So they're the first ones that hunters kill, and then they bring them home with them. We've actually seen part of the spread happens because Wisconsin has a whole bunch of this, and people go to Wisconsin from almost every state in the country to hunt for deer. Um, and so those deer end up in other states, and a lot of those deer have prions in them. Um, and eventually the deer just get so much brain damage they're not eating and they, they die. Um, so they, they die in one to two years. We don't know exactly how they catch it, but we know the prion disease, the prion proteins are out there. Wherever a deer has died, you'll find the prions attached to plants and dirt and the carcass. Um, we don't have any cases yet where a person has gotten one of these diseases from a deer, but everybody I know thinks it's only a matter of time. Um, this is um, where these deer have been found that are infected and just the, which states have detected it and which Canadian provinces. And you can see from 2010 or 2000 to 2010 to 2019, it spread through most of the U S and a lot of Canada. Um, and I actually want to skip ahead because when I, sorry, when I mentioned um, people getting it from deer, there is a precedent for that. So mad cow disease happened when people started feeding sheep brains to cows. So sheep brains apparently are a cheap source of protein that you can feed to cows, but cows are herbivores. Cows are vegan. Cows are our friends. They eat grass. They want to eat plants and yet someone thought it was a great idea to feed them sheep brains well sheep have scrapie and so a lot of the cows ended up with bovine spongiform encephalopathy this ha this was happening in the uk they had to slaughter i think millions of cows um, to make sure this didn't spread and a disease happened after that in the UK called variant Kreutzfeldt-Jakob where young people were getting Kreutzfeldt-Jakob disease. And they traced this to eating cows that had bovine spongiform encephalopathy. So once they got rid of this by killing the cows, um, people stopped getting this. And so the question is, will this happen with chronic wasting disease in deer? will hunters start getting spongiform encephalopathies? We don't know. This is fatal familial insomnia, and this is extremely rare. Um, 
there there might be one case per year in the U.S. or something like this, and it does happen in in families because uh, people can pass down a gene that makes them susceptible to it, and for whatever reason, they're susceptible to that gene conversion happening in the thalamus. Um, so um, their thalamus will quickly start to break down. So. Um, their processing of sensory information can't happen, and it starts interfering with their cognition and interfering with their sleep. I mean, you can imagine if it's damaging the hypothalamus, it could be disrupting um, release of, of hormones. Um, and the autonomic nervous system, so different things happen, like problems with sweat, problems with digestion, problems um, with blood pressure. Um, and the the one that gives most people the nightmares is that there are people who have been known to just not be able to sleep, and so they they stay awake like zombies until they get an infection that kills them. So this kills people within about a year of once they get symptoms, and it does tend to happen to older people. And we don't we don't know why. We don't know what the age component is in prion diseases. Um, but there is an age component in prion diseases. You'll notice I haven't written anything about prevention. The only prevention you can do is for things like mad cow disease and that variant Creutzfeldt-Jakob. If you don't eat cows that have a spongiform encephalopathy, you won't get it from them. But there's nothing you can do to prevent Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease. There's nothing you can do to prevent this disease, the fatal familial insomnia, if you have that gene. Um, and there's no treatment for any of these. So the treatment for this would involve making the person comfortable. Uh, here are the abbreviations. And then the last thing is um, histology of a brain with a spongiform encephalopathy, um, showing holes, just where lots of living neurons used to be and no longer are. So that's the end of lecture six. We're ending on a very dreary note. Um, what I can tell you is these diseases are very rare, but if we're, if we have to study rare diseases, we have to study them. So we won't come back to prions, but we will come back to viruses. So unit four, we're going to look at a whole bunch of viruses and a whole bunch of bacteria and the diseases they cause. For now, there's plenty of virus biology for you to study and plenty of things to think about prion diseases and I'm I'm sorry about all of the uh, personal stories I was sharing but I don't know any better way to kind of explain how we feel about these things than to show behaviors I've witnessed around these things okay well good job getting through the videos I know there's a lot here and it is a lot to work through so hang in there and um, don't be shy about coming to office hours one o'clock Monday through Thursday, or um, asking questions on the Q&A. Take care.